Big Apple, long the symbol of hope and prosperity to millions of immigrants. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, and they arrive, setting up small businesses and a new life, free from bitter memories of poverty, overcrowding, and in some cases, persecution, which had dogged them in Europe. Sol's grandfather had traveled from Italy to New York in 1911, setting up an Italian delicatessen on 86th Street, Brooklyn. Sol knew a thing or two about keeping body and soul together. The business had remained in the family since the grandfather arrived in New York, growing at one stage to a chain of three restaurants. But now, in the age of fast food and increased competition, he struggled to keep his business afloat as fast food outlets took an ever-increasing bite of the Big Apple's expenditure. Good morning, Sol. Today's raw deal. Well, these may be humble cabbages and carrots to you, Jess, but to me, I had a bit of magic, a bit of mayo, and it's... Coleslaw. <laughs> yes, well, you better make the most of them, Mr. Dimitri, because I'm not gonna be bringing you any more. I got fired this morning. For what? Uh, economic downturn. They say I'm surplus to requirements. And you, a hard-working boy. Oh, what's the world coming to, eh? Hey, hey, Myrtle? That's tough. Yeah, look, don't worry about me. Something else will turn up. It always does. Why does he bother coming? Why doesn't he just stay in bed? Sleeping on the job is all he ever does. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Oh, what's the matter with what's you? What's the matter with you, huh? Sleeping you hit me to wake you up. No, you don't understand. You hit me. The simpleton. He tell me I don't understand. I understand these and these and these. They're filthy, dirty. My kitchen is a pigsty because you are a lazy, slow pig. That's it. I quit. Ha! Huh, you'll never get another job unless they're looking for Rip Van Winkle. You dirty them, you clean them. Don't suppose you'll ever stand up for yourself, will you, David? What a great pair. David the Whip and Carlos the Bully. Me, I'm out of here. Have a nice life. What are you looking at? What's going on? I just fired Frank for sleeping on the job. Jess. I think your luck is about to change. And that's how I came to work as a kitchen hand. After losing my job as a delivery boy, something came up. But I didn't realize it would involve the mob. Hey, can't you read? Manners, Maud. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but we're closed for lunch. Well, like the little girl said, we can't read, but we can eat and we're hungry. Well, I suppose. Myrtle, go check with Carlos. Maybe the meatloaf? Yeah, sure, the meatloaf sounds swell. Whoa! What are you doing? Trying to kill me? That was indoor soft. Yeah, just about we're not in the alleyway, huh? <laughs> You're pretty good. You're the first to think so? Ah, oh, come on. Admit it. You're good. I guess. You ever thought about taking it up? What, you mean professionally? Yeah. All the time. I dream about it, the ballpark. The crowd waiting, silent. It's the bottom of the ninth. It's all lucked up. I can feel the ball, soft, cool leather in my hands. Then let one go. A smooth, fast curveball whacking straight into the glove. The perfect pitch. So tell me, man. What are you still doing here? 
Who's gonna take any notice of a puny potato peeler from Brooklyn? Where's Carlos? Uh, he, uh... He just... He no. left it to your clock. Yeah, well, that figures. Don't suppose either of you could play up a couple of portions of meatloaf? Sure. But I thought we were close. Who you got out there? The president or something? Well, not quite. But they're sure behaving VIP. You know, all the rich and famous used to eat here. Really? Well, sure. Woody Allen, Mia Farrow, Lisa Minnelli, even Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Maybe we should have got them to sign the walls. So who's out there? A couple of hoods. Phil and Mr. G. What a pair. They claimed they once had links with the Mafia, but in reality, they were a small-time outfit who, like everyone else, were just trying to scratch a living. It's good meatloaf. They didn't entirely play by the rules. Do you have to do that? Do what? Try putting it in your mouth. Whatever you say, boss. Hey, pal. I have a little proposition that might just interest you. Maybe two ladies might want to go and powder your noses or whatever. It's okay, Myrtle. Do what the man says. Good girls you got there. Must be tough bring them up on your own. How did you? you know your business, I got mine. Heard she died in childbirth. That's real tough. It was a long time ago. Hey, but look how you managed. This sure is a real nice place. I don't know quite where this is all leading, but can we skip the detour down memory lane? Sure. Why not? So what do they want? Oh, Maud, how on earth do I know? Maybe they want to hire the Dilly for a party or something. They don't look like the kind of people who have friends to invite. Maud? They were rude to me, and he pushed me. That's because you're so short. He probably didn't even see you. That's because I haven't stopped growing yet. You just wait. Well, I'll be out of here by then. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. Into the arms of a handsome man? Yuck. Well, you'll see. When you're a little older, you'll want a sweetheart too. What's a sweetheart? Well, someone who's kind, cherishes you, buys you presents, takes you places. Well, you know, that sort of thing. So, who's your sweetheart gonna be? I'm not telling. Jess. No. It is, isn't it? No. Then why are you blushing? I don't know if Myrtle really was interested in me, but she sure was concerned about the visit from the Hoods. Pa? Huh? You're unhappy, aren't you? Hey, using the intuition that Ma gave me, right now I'm thinking that maybe you're in some kind of trouble? Oh, really? And what makes you think that? Well, your shoulders are rounded, and your face is sad, and your eyes... Uh, well, your eyes look kind of hunted. Sounds like I need a vacation. Seriously, though? What did those men want? Nothing I can't handle. Are you sure? Hey, is the Pope Catholic? Can Barbara Streisand sing? Is, is Cats not the longest running Broadway musical? Oh, well, I don't know. I've never been to a Broadway show. So go, take a night off. Well, would you take me? You know I can't. Well, it would be a kind of vacation, wouldn't it? If only for a couple of hours. You could ask David, maybe. David. David? But he peels vegetables for a living. He has a living. It's a start. Could be a good sign. Oh, it sure could. If I found him the tiniest bit entertaining, which I don't, and, and all he does is play with that stupid ball all day. We've all got to dream, Myrtle. Well, dreams is all he's got. He doesn't have a hope. I mean, who would give him a trial? I'm going back to bed. You 
want to watch where you throw this thing. You could do some serious damage. That trash can looks like it's being hit by a large automobile. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't know you were out there. Where's your boss? Uh, we're closed. Then, uh, you can go home. I, uh, I live here. Then, uh, isn't it past your bedtime, Squirt? <laughs> Through there? Good night. <clears throat> Watch the bed bugs don't bite. It's not enough. It's what we agreed. It's all I can afford. Can you afford to replace your windows? They don't need replacing. They would if they all got broke. We agreed 10%. You agreed 10%. Now I'm agreeing five on top, my considerations. For transportation costs, taking the money from you to Phil. But... There's no buts. I'll be back for my 5%. to pay 10% of his takings to Phil, let alone another five on top to Mr. G. And he couldn't afford to risk either of them smashing up the joint. Or both. Something had to give. But you know what they say. A problem shared is a problem halved. So Saul decided to tell us what was going down. So I propose that we all take a cut in wages. I don't get wages. Mort, shush. You gotta be joking. You don't pay enough as it is. Look, surely there's some other way we could work it out, right? Like saying no, and ending up with a broken leg in the hospital? Why don't we just tell this guy, Phil, that he's being ripped off by his right-hand man? And for my pains, I get two broken legs and still wind up in the hospital. I'll do it. I'll tell him. You? Yeah, why not? Why not just tell these guys that, that, that they can't have what doesn't belong to them? I mean, why should they get something for nothing when we have to work so hard? I thank you for your concern, but I cannot allow you to do this. You're, you're too young. You're, you're too... Nerdy. It's not what I was going to say. You can't stand up against these guys. They, they'll break you into little pieces, and, and I'll feel responsible. Let's run with the wage cut, huh? I'll have the chopped liver. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We run out of chopped liver. Oh, would you excuse us for a moment? What? What? He says, what? I'll tell you what. What do you mean we've run out of chopped liver? We've never run out of chopped liver. For the love of God, this is a New York deli. How could we run out of chopped liver? Well, Carlos says there's no chopped liver. There's no lamb chops, and the specials are all finished, too. I'm just the waitress, Pa. All I can do is tell them what's on or off the menu. Did we suddenly get a run on invisible customers? So Saul had a real problem. With Phil and Mr. G's cut, there was not enough to go around. Are you trying to ruin me? Haven't I got enough problems without having to turn business away? Look, a 25% cut in my wages equals a 25% cut in the food I prepare. Pure man. If you don't like it, find another chef who'll work for dimes. Me, I got a wife, children to support, a brother who won't even All listen All right, now. already. I get the drift. I was worth a try, but... Are you right? I reinstate the wages 100%. Effective, immediate. What am I going to do now, Carlos? I don't know. Pray? What are you doing? Just looking at the crack of blue sky between the buildings. Wondering what it's like out there. Don't you like working? Pete's been hungry. Yes, but what would you do if you didn't? 
I'd be the greatest pitcher America's ever seen. Is that why you're always playing with this ball? <laughs> I guess. My sister says it's stupid. I know. You like her, don't you? I guess. I like you too. Then will you be my sweetheart? Well, I'd be honored, man. I know this nice little daddy diner on the corner of 86th. Maybe we could go there sometime. Hey. <laughs> Tell him I'll give him four tomorrow. What are you waiting for? Go, hurry, hurry. Keeping me awake. Sorry. What's on your mind? Saul hocked off his wedding ring today. What? I can't stand by and watch this happen. So what are you gonna do? I don't know yet. Got to let me help you. There's nothing you can do. Yes, there is. I can. We can stand up against them. We've been over this. Go back to bed. He'll be here any minute. No. I don't want you getting involved. I am involved. What are you doing? I'm putting your money back where it belongs. It's only money, David. It's not worth it. You're wrong. It is worth it. Where would we be if we just let bullies push us around all the time? You sure are a dark horse, David. Never had you down for... Courage? Look at me, I'm quaking in my boots. Which door? Kitchen like last time? Had a guess. Okay, you stay put. Don't make a sound till I come and get you. What are you gonna do? Don't worry, I've got a plan. Good. Always hanging around like some dopey doorman, huh? Like I said, I live here. And you're a thief stealing money from my home and place of work. You want to watch your mouth, Mr. Pajamas? Or what? How about I knock your teeth out, huh? How about you pin back your ears and listen to what I have to say? I... We don't need your protection, and we certainly don't need to pay for it. So just get out of here and tell your boss that you are surplus to requirements. Where'd you go? Get out of here! I'm gonna break every tiny little bone in your body! Get out of here! What's the old saying? The dumber they are, the harder they fall. But you listen to me. The smart thing to do would be to get out of here before I call in the law. It was time for celebrations. David had won the day by standing up to the bully. 
who turned out to be no more than a coward, running off into the night. To David, for saving the day. To David. To David. And to the Delhi. To the Delhi. Why can't I have any champagne? Because you're only 12. That's not fair. My kitchen! What's going on? What have you done to my kitchen? No matter how hard I'd practice, I would never have a future in baseball. But David's talent came to the attention of Phil. Which one of you is a potato slinger? Get out of my kitchen. You, huh? Do me a favor. I cook potato. I sling nothing, not even leftovers. Now get your hands off me. You have the manners of a pig. And you have the manners of a chef. That's because I am a chef. It was me. I'm the potato slinger. <laughs> it was. Yeah, you crack me up. Mr. G would gobble you up for breakfast and still have room for two fry-ups. Show me your arm. All right, get him out of here. Come on. And where are you taking him? We're putting him on trial. What's going on? You're gonna play ball? Together. Mr. G has been skimming money off the top all over the place. He's richer than I am, or was. Took David here to stand up to him. I like that in the guy. The thing is, Phil, I can't even afford to pay. You let me train the boy, we'll look after you gratis. And my kitchen? Yeah, we'll take care of that too. The boy's got potential, and I have a little interest in a baseball team. Who knows? Maybe we can make it to the top. Yeah, but can you go legit? You know what? I'd like that. Yeah, why not? Legit. The proud, honest owner of the best baseball team in the land. Everybody, take a good look. David here is going to make our dreams come true. So David's own dream looked as if it was also finally coming true, along with Myrtle's. Going. Oh, just Broadway. Oh, can I come? No, I have a date. Ooh. Whoa, David. Didn't I earn the show, eh? Yeah, but first we've got a little something to do. Haven't we, Myrtle? Toodaloo. You just carry on with your napkins, young lady. Your time will come. So Saul got his wedding ring back. David had stood up to the bully and for what he believed in. Myrtle got her man. Everyone's wishes came true. As for me, I got to peel the potatoes and do the washing up that night. But hey, at least the dishes were new. <laughs> <laughs>